have a 1977 Jeep and uh, the job for this is pretty simple. Get it straight and uh, get it done. First thing I do, I spray some guide coat on the epoxy. It's like a block on it. And it can tell me what's going on with this panel, how straight it is. Now that I'm done sanding on the epoxy, let's evaluate what I found. As you can see right here, we have metal. That shows me those are high spots. Uh, you have to take care of the high spots in the metal working stage because they'll give you trouble later in the primer stage. And right here, we see a crown. See that right there? Where there's no guide coat? That's a crown. That's a high spot created by this ding right here which has the guide coat in it that shows me that's a low spot I'm gonna fix this I got access to the back side little hole right here uh, I don't have my good metal working tools with me right now but I got this this will work and uh, this is a trick an old man taught me what I'm gonna do from the inside I'm gonna hammer out with this on the low spot from the outside I'm gonna hammer down on the high spots and it'll even everything out. And I could also pull it up. I'm gonna knock down this little high spot right here. The metal showing. From the outside, I want to hammer it down, and from behind it, I'm gonna place this dolly there to support it. So it hammers it down nice and straight. And then I fill it with my hand. If I hammer it down too low, I could always switch it up hammered out from the inside, dolly from the outside. Then check it with my hand again. Feels good. Now, we're going to fix this. We don't have good enough backside access for this, so what we're going to do is we're going to grind the primer away and we're going to pull that out with stud welds. Now I want to take my stud pins and weld them in the low spots. So let's do that. I don't want to pull the trigger too hard because I want to be able to take some side cutters twist the stud off. If I hold the trigger down for too long, I have to grind off the stud. So I just want to hold it long enough to make the pull and then twist the pin right off. So it's, you know, save time. Take my slide hammer. Give it a little yank. Then I take my slide hammer and give it a little yank. Then I want to check my progress. I use my fingers around the stud and I determine it's still a little low 
So uh, since I didn't cut it off, I can still pull it up. a little crown that surrounds it. So, I'm going to take this little cooler right here and pull while I hammer down on the highs. This area good, but I can see I need to put a stud pin here too, so I gotta grind that away, put another stud up here. But this feels great. Puller again. And I'm hammering where the guide coat is gone, and I can see the block is dug in. That shows me there's a crown, which is a high spot. So that's where I'm hammering. to take off the pins. This is where feathering the trigger gives you a good advantage because now you don't have to grind these up. You can just twist them up like that. All done. I'm smoothing this area out with a 2x4 and plastic mallet. It stretched it a little bit. And I don't want this to be like this when I'm blocking on it in primer. And then I gotta baby it, and most likely I'll dig in because it's gonna flex on me and move around. So I gotta shrink that. I wanna find the place that has the most flex and is either raised the highest or the lowest and grind just that area away. And that would be right here, just this area right here. Then I take my normal tip out and replace it with the shrinking tip. I make sure I have air that's readily available because when I heat this up with the shrinking tip, I want to zap it with some air to cool it down, to shrink it back down so it doesn't flex. So I do a couple light shrinks on the bare metal. And it should suck the metal right right up. Now it's nice and stiff. Usually when you do shrinking with the stud gun, it doesn't distribute the heat very well and so it can over shrink very easily and suck it in just a little bit. What I like doing after I use the stud gun is I like hammering it. Well in this case, since it sucked it back down, I'll hammer it from the inside with my plastic mallet and block it like this. And hammer over the wood area and bring it back out. And it'll stretch it a little bit again, but it's not going to flex on you. And I did that already, and now it's perfect. It's good to go. So uh, don't always just think, shrink it back down, get her done. Because sometimes you have to repeat the process. Shrink, stretch, shrink, stretch.
actually rolling right. Now I'm going to show you how to fabricate a tent. We want to make our template with thin cardboard like this. As you can see, this is a box for gloves. The cardboard they use for soda cans works great too. Now that I got my cardboard placed in the back and firmly pressed against the opening, I start to trace. And these marks show me where the edge will be. Now, I want to make my cut, and I want to make my cut on the outside of the pen mark. Now, I take some 18 gauge metal and scribe the outline on my template. Also want to cut on the side of the line that leaves you with more metal just like we did with the template and if it doesn't fit and it's too small then I am stupid now that we got the patch cut out we trimmed it up with the file and we got it sitting in place and then attack each corner. Um, it's not all lined up right now, but it gets more lined up as I tack. Um, so now, it's just time for welding. Luke, I am your father. Once you got a few tacks in there to line up your panels, you can now begin to close the seam.